what I'll do first is I'll just ask you to introduce yourself, by, by which I mean, tell us your name and your home institution. And if we start with you, Daniel, and then we go from my left to right, perhaps. Or, uh, which one is your left? left. Okay. Which one is your left? Okay. Yeah, <laughs> the opposite of yours. Yeah. Um, so, yes, we'll start that way. So if, uh, if I ask you to introduce yourselves and uh, we'll start with Daniel and then move on to the second screen. Thank you. So my name is Daniel Persson. So I am at the Department of Mathematical Sciences in Gothenburg, the university is Chalmers University of uh, Technology. My name is Axel Kleinschmidt. I'm from the Max Planck Institute for Gravitational Physics in Potsdam, Germany. And um, yeah, I work in, I'm in the division of quantum gravity and unified theories and work on mathematical structures of string theory. My name is Katrin Wendland. I'm at the School of Mathematics at Trinity College Dublin. I call myself a geometer and I have a, an interest also in conformal field theory and mathematical aspects of conformal field theory. Hi, I'm Saul Friedberg I'm from the Department of Mathematics at Boston College in the USA. And I'm interested in number theory, automorphic forms and representation theory and excited to see the connections to physics that are emerging. Wonderful, thank you all very much. Now, our first question, could you give me an overview of your programs, theme and topic, please? Yeah, maybe I can start. So, um, well, the, the program is called New Connections in Number Theory and Physics. And um, I would say for short, the main theme and purpose of this is really to bring mathematicians and physicists together uh, to discuss common areas of interest. And I think uh, one aspect of this is that, you know, physicists quite often have questions that they want to have answered or problems, and, and they might find some very good help from our fellow mathematicians. And on the other hand, uh, what we've come to realize is that in physics, when we ask questions about you know, nature or whatever, maybe questions about black holes, let's say, it turns out that, that when you translate those questions into equations, uh, they usually point to some interesting new aspects of math. Uh, and that could be very fascinating for mathematicians because suddenly you have a new input of ideas coming from physics. And so that's what we hope to to cultivate and to foster these kind of uh, new collaborations between math and physics. Just to add to that, I think that historically, physics has generated all sorts of great ideas that have taken on a mathematical life and been very important to mathematics. And conversely, mathematical discoveries have played this, an important role in physics. So we're trying to do that in a new context. And it's very exciting to, to see that coming to, to fruition. And maybe we should ask that there have been programs like this organized by some of us, not me, before, and we're building on that experience, of course. And uh, I mean, every time we have new topics, but uh, and, uh, uh, and new people coming in, but uh, also we have recurring topics, and that's kind of the fun of it. So conformal field theory will be one example, or the keyword of amplitudes and these things. And I think this time, for the first time, we had a lot of Langlands program, so there are a number of keywords that fit into this context between number theory and uh, yeah. I mean, maybe one, one more aspect building on what Saul said, that when we started this and wrote the first application and so on, we were also motivated by the fact that, you know, in the last century, there was this huge surge of developments in connections between geometry and physics. Um, starting maybe with Einstein in general relativity, but then later in connections to, uh, say, string theory, there was mirror symmetry, there were understanding of four manifolds using ideas from quantum field theory and so on. So there was this immense uh, interactions between physics and math. And we were feeling that, you know, the time is ripe for similar types of interactions to, to happen, uh, but more focusing on number theory. Maybe I'd like to add that there are two different themes in number theory that both seem to be coming up and playing an important role in the connections to physics. And one theme is automorphic forms, and the other theme is mock modular forms. And these are two communities that are adjacent. Um, I've been lucky enough to go to conferences in both areas, and, and I'm excited about them both, but they don't always interact 
um, the same with each other that much. And, and now we find them both coming into the story with physics. So it's exciting and it, and it brings more connections that even um, among the mathematicians that I think potentially are very valuable. Well, I think you've done an excellent job of answering the second question as well there, which uh, was about why this is a particularly exciting or timely topic. Uh, you, you touched on that quite comprehensively. Is there anything else you'd like to add on that point? Is there any other aspect of this or any other particular aspect to 2022, which makes this the right program for the right time? I think a particularly important aspect to 2022 is the fact that we're at least feeling we're post pandemic. And we are noticing, we're noticing that we have missed the personal interaction a lot. And we can see that in particular when we try to build bridges between mathematics and physics. That usually happens um, just from some unplanned, you know, statement that somebody has made. I mean, you can't really plan this and that's why it doesn't work via Zoom conferences or anything. It's really, really building on the in-person meeting. Yeah, that's wonderful to hear. Thank you. Um, so our third question then, what are the main challenges that you and the participants have addressed so far and, and will continue to address? Language. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I think it's really hard for mathematicians and physicists to talk. And in um, a prior event in Stony Brook, we um, saw introductory lectures being given by each group that didn't really speak so well to the other group. But now we have more time to drill down, to really take our time to explore these connections, to maybe stumble a little bit as we communicate with each other, but to go beyond that. And, and I think this is very exciting. It's really hard to talk to someone whose discipline is a little different. They may be talking about the same thing, but attaching other names to them. And, and it, it seems like a, a silly thing to, to matter, but it turns out that the weight of all of that for many, many names is, is really an obstacle to be overcome. But I think um, the fact that we're here for eight weeks and really can talk together and, and talk in small groups and talk in person um, has, has, is contributing a lot to our mutual understanding. Yeah. I mean, indeed, to, to build on the, uh, sorry, go ahead. No, no. <laughs> go ahead, Anton. So, so it's really, uh, as Katrin said, like learning a new language takes some time and it it's, needs some getting used to and some practice as well. So we, I mean, repeat uh, similar discussions often and just to get a common language and to to be able to communicate in an efficient way and then, then we make progress from there. And this time for the first time there's a regular meeting where yeah. mathematicians, yeah. You, you initiated that, right? where mathematicians and physicists are actually uh, working it out. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean maybe just to give an example, I mean there are these many years ago like Axel and I and others were looking at these certain functions that appear in, in studies of quantum gravity and and we wanted to understand why they were, you know, vanishing in a certain sense. And, and then, you know, you start talking to mathematicians and then you realize that there is a whole community working on automorphic forms, uh, Sol being one of them. And, and then they say, well, there's a simple reason why this happens. And suddenly you, you realize that if you just formulate your question in the right way, there can be a host of new tools that, that you can use. And I think that's really fascinating. And the flip side of that is that some of the some of the objects that that uh, the physicists are finding are natural are not objects that mathematicians have looked at before. So the physics suggests new um, objects for study, new 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 directions to go, and and that's potentially very exciting on a purely mathematical level. Though of course the connection to physics is also delighting, delightful and important as well. Maybe we can mention in this context that we had uh, during the program, we had this uh, sort of spontaneous discussion of uh, quantum field theory for mathematicians, uh, which perhaps was not really part of the original plan, but it happened because the participants started talking. And, and that was from a very different point of view where just basic aspects of physics were pre presented and, and it created very intense and lively discussions that was quite entertaining and it's continuing you're talking mm -hmm. about it in the past it's continuing right right yeah yeah okay so it's continuing <laughs> it's ongoing thank you <laughs> wonderful thank you very much for that uh so our, our next question is about the applications or potential applications that the field has 
silence. But it's a foundational, it's fundamental research. So um, there are no applications in the traditional sense that we will build something tomorrow from the results of this uh, workshop and program. But there's a lot of fundamental research that's happening uh, and that has potential applications in, way that's, in ways that we cannot predict. I mean, we've often seen in the history of science that, that this fundamental research then leads to applications um, going forward. So it's a long-term investment to do this kind of research, but there's an awful lot of experience, an awful lot of history that shows that this fundamental research does have consequences in, in the future. And also the workshops we had within the, in, within the program, they were themed as bridges, because somehow if you think of mathematics and physics as being two disparate things, which is maybe not a good uh, picture, but I mean, there are gems on both sides of the river or abyss or whatever. And one of the applications is that we sort of identify these things and ask like, which ones can we take to the other side across the bridge and bring some, some fruitful uh, new results or ideas to the other side. And I mean, uh, one very nice, uh, well, often cited example of this, I mean, Saul mentioned mock modular forms as being one uh, sort of community that is, uh, that is you know, participating in this program. And that has a very fascinating story going back to Ramanujan um, and his last letter to Hardy before he died that basically, you know, it took, you know, nearly a hundred years for mathematicians to try to understand some of Ramanujan's works. And, you know, eventually uh, it was understood as being a theory of mock modular forms. And that was also you know, understood as being you know, important for understanding certain properties of, of quantum gravity and properties of black holes. Uh, so that's kind of a hundred year uh, period before you see sort of applications, although you can certainly see applications in math, but then suddenly it appears in, in physics as well. And they were there even before the mathematics was cleared up. So uh, right. the exactly. of physics and conformal field theory specifically, these functions right. exactly. are yes. independently. Indeed, yeah. And some of the new connections, um, such as the connection between L values and entropy for black holes, um, points to future developments and, and, and more connections to, um, to come. Right, right. We have crossed the bridge to the other programs, to one program before and one program after us. So, I mean, we have, we, we share participants and I, I think that's a nice aspect. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I think you've, you very much touched on the final question there as well. So uh, the final one is, could there be any other impacts from your program, such as novel collaborations across disparate fields? Now, you, you've just mentioned that exactly. And also the, the core of your program linking together mathematicians and physicists. So I feel cruel to ask you if there could be any other impacts. Um, but if there are any others, then please do volunteer them. Well, maybe just to reconfirm, I, mean, it, I think the work that we put into selecting participants and in particular to bring new people to the table, I think that really paid off because we can see that they talk to the old guys and uh, there are new collaborations that we see arising from that. So that's been working really nicely. I'm very happy about that. Yeah, yeah and I think that the young people in the field see the vigor and the interest in communicating to people in a different discipline and um, I hope that that will really um, inspire them to, to continue with that in the years to come. Wonderful. Well, thank you very much. That was extremely interesting. And I, I really appreciate your time taking to explain uh, the full details of your program.